Okay, that was a lot of questions in one question. Um, well, you know, I've been doing it long enough to kind of like see the different, I guess, purposes for music videos. It started like an image thing. Uh, it, eventually, it eventually became all about selling albums. And when that stopped, it became, it died for a moment. And then it came back a little bit where it started uh, and became a, a creative forum for artists to express themselves again. So it kind of, I kind of seen uh, the reason for making vid music videos uh, change through the years. And it's pretty much back to where it started now, where, where music videos are supposed to be fun. You don't sell any albums anyways. So it's all about making, making it you know, for other reasons than to sell albums. So it's kind of back a little bit to where it started. Well, it's a, it's a kind of, it's a little bit of a balance though, because it's never, uh, none of the music videos I ever do is for me. It's always for somebody else. So you cannot go into it thinking that you are going to do something that you think is cool or creative or fun. It's always about figuring out what that artist need at that time. Um, but then, of course, as a filmmaker, if you if you if you're able to put your fingerprint on it, um, that's a good thing. If you have your own style, it usually takes a few years before you find your own way of doing stuff and uh, and find out what that style is. And uh, I always saw myself as a pretty broad director because I do so many different types of things. So I'm happy you're saying I'm, I'm having a style because I never really thought I did because I do so many different types of, of, uh, of different types of jobs. Uh, but looking back at my work, and it reminded me yesterday when we spoke about it, that it always comes back to, to the editing and the precision I have in the post-production. And that's, I think, where I put my fingerprint on stuff. Well, I, th I think there's a, there's a lot of differences between um, making a, a, a shorter form type of story and, and, and extend that into 90 minutes, uh, which is the standard for, for feature length movies. Um, for me, it's kind of, I kind of always have the same type of approach, whatever I do. Obviously, a, a movie requires more of your involvement and everything takes longer but most of the movies I've done has been very fast paced and the, the scripts that I've been drawn to kind of suits my type of storytelling uh, the very direct type of storytelling the, um, the fast paced editing and all that it's, so it's, I've kind of taken my way of telling stories with me into, uh, into my movies and uh, when, I, when I started that with my first movie uh, Spawn that was it was kind of like a little different back then, but if you look at movies today, most of them are have that type of direct, in-your-face type of storytelling now. You know, I learned uh, from editing that you can tell stories with edits and inserts and cutaways rather than, you know, large ca camera moves and big scenes. Uh, and that's the style that I bring with me into making movies. I mean, it's so different in, in, in movies. It, you, I mean, I, I usually say that, in, especially in, uh, in Hollywood, it's like it's not much freedom left for, for directors. Obviously, it depends on what level you're on, but as a general thing, it's like, to me, Hollywood movies is the producer's forum, and TV is the writer's forum, and independent movies is the director's forum. Uh, and I'm personally drawn to independent movies. Um, I mostly watch documentaries and independent movies. Those are always my favorite movies. Uh, and the stories that I write and the stories I read and like are more in that category. And so that gives you probably a little bit more freedom as a, as a director. Unfortunately, being a filmmaker in general, it's always so, ex it's so expensive to make movies. So you always have somebody to pay you to do it, which means that that person Need, you need to report back to that person. So there's always that. It doesn't matter how big or small you are in, the, in, in this world. You always have somebody that pay you to do it. Unless you start to do movies yourself and just for yourself to, to show your friends. Then you can do whatever the hell you want. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's always 
somebody to report back to. Yeah, no, I think I think that's very true, and I, I, uh, I probably wouldn't get out of bed if I didn't have a schedule, um, and I probably wouldn't get anything done unless I was in production. You know, that's uh, and we get we get it kind of spoiled with that as, as directors because we're when we are in production, everything is taken care of, and the second you're not in production, that's when you realize how complicated your life is. Uh, so I try to keep myself in production as much as much as I can. I'm also very and the way I work is that the more I have to do, the better I, the more creative I can be. Uh, so if I take time off and then, you know, it always takes me a little time to get going again. But if I'm in the middle of traveling and shooting and doing all these things, ideas come easy for me and I get a lot of stuff done. Well, no, no, I just came in last night and we did a Q&A last night, which was, uh, uh, it was good. It was fun. It was very friendly. I'm usually, you know, some of my, some of my work is controversial. There's always like uh, an energy in the room that could go, could go wrong. But yesterday it was friendly and I could tell that people actually, you know, watched the stuff and they all had done their homework and it felt, and it was late too. So they were all there for waiting for me because I came in late too. So. I felt nothing but love and, and good questions and enthusiasm in the room. And this festival seems to be very friendly. It was a good party last night that kept going for a while. And, uh, and of course, getting an award like this is it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of like a proof that your whole work kind of worked, you know. And you never know, as a director, you're always caught up in what's going on right now. It's very rare for me to get a chance to look back. And, uh, and actually sit down for a moment and think about what you've done the last 20 years. And that happened yesterday in the Q&A. Some of those videos we looked at together with, uh, with the audience, I haven't seen basically since I made them. I haven't seen them. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of time traveling. It's a little bit of feeling old, uh, but also feeling very proud. I don't, the, the thing I, I don't, I, in my heart, I don't really feel like I've achieved even close to what I'm capable of doing, which I think is a very healthy feeling to have. Um, so, I, I, you know, in music videos, I, I do feel like a dinosaur. I feel like I've done it. I still love it and I f still find reasons to do it. But moving over to movies, I feel very young. I feel like I've just started. So I feel like I have a lot more to give. Uh, in the longer formats. And I still love my commercials and, you know, staying busy in my art projects, my still photography and all those different types of things, I think fuels me to do more. Uh, work in different countries with different type of clients and uh, that's kind of what fuels me. But it is, a, it is kind of like, a, it's a two-way thing right now because I do feel like I've achieved a lot, but I just started when it comes to movies. So. That's, that's what fuels me right now.